what a ride this is, creating a new podcast. So many incredible people are reaching out to me to let me know they hear me, they connect with the message, and they support me and love what I'm doing. My special love and thanks go to Marsha and Ayudeli. Marsha, keep writing, keep journaling, keep taking those beautiful nature photos and sharing your positive spirit and messages with the world. And Ayudeli, may you enjoy the last days of summer in air conditioning. Yes, stay cool, my friend, and thanks for the encouragement. While most of my podcast listeners are in the United States, there are listeners in other countries too, especially in Germany. Yes, Germany is listening to Let the Verse Flow on a regular basis. Thank you. I'm thrilled to have you. If you want to help this show grow, and I hope that you do, and help me reach new listeners all over the world, please share it with a friend and rate and review the show on Apple or Spotify. Your share with one friend will make a difference. All right, sending you all the love and hoping you stay on the bright side of the beat. Now, let's get on with the show. Everything begins with the breath. Life begins, calmness too, fast breath when exerted, slow breath when relaxed. A living symphony inside our chest, pushing us forward from one moment to the next. But when the breath speeds up from worry and unrest, it's time to rein it in, slow it down, use the mind. For solace lies within its rhythm as it casts out troubled spirits and comforts with a pattern of stillness. You control the rise and fall of your breath, sit a while and see it listen to your will in service of your peace. Look within, for you know best, and the breath is there to set the scene for good times to come and big dreams to dream. Today we're going to explore the breath. Like magic, the rhythm of our breath controls every vital organ we have. From our brain, to our arms and legs, our fingers and toes. It's thought that the breath may carry our spirit, like wind rushing over an expansive prairie. Amazingly, we control our breath. We control the life force and the spirit when we settle our mind. Today, we'll talk about breath and how it can be a versatile ally to us, whether through meditation, weightlifting, cardio, or deep cleansing breaths. Our breath can help us either push forward or slow down. It's a powerhouse, and controlling it should be in everyone's personal growth toolkit. I'm Jill Hodge, writer and host of Let the Verse Flow a bi-weekly personal growth podcast where I share my special mixtape of stories, poems, and music that's designed to help you turn your struggles into strength. It's a new brand of self-improvement. The opinions I express here are my own and not a substitute for professional help. If you need someone to talk to, please reach out to a mental health professional. Now, sit back and relax and listen to my reflections from the bright side of the bee. I have a strong fight or flight response. Yes, I'm blessed with the enviable position of being easily triggered when stressed to activate a series of bodily changes that may include fast, shallow breathing, sweating, nausea, weakness in my arms and legs, and feeling faint. In olden times, I would be that woman who faints when overcome by sadness. You know, the one who carries a flowery napkin and keels over when news comes in a heavy sealed envelope. I think I've been watching too many Pride and Prejudice movies. Have you noticed how many versions of Pride and Prejudice there are? There are even zombie versions. 
Or perhaps I'm more closely connected to early man than others. But the fight or flight, which is an activation system that helped our ancestors respond quickly to stress, say when a beast was chasing them, it goes haywire with me when I'm faced with stress. Things like giving speeches, asserting myself in situations where I don't feel heard, or multitasking around things that carry a heavy emotional weight. In fact, the only time I activate the good fight or flight uh, mechanism is when I'm exercising. Rowing is my exercise of choice because when I do it, all my muscles feel activated in the right way. Um, I'll get to exercise role in this later. But fight or flight disrupts our internal balance and is activated when we are stressed by external factors, danger, chaotic situations, emotionally overwhelming situations. These are the things that usually trigger fight or flight. And any stress, including economic, social, or physical, can trigger it. And lately, most of us have plenty of those. When not dealt with, this excess stress can cause pain and discomfort and impact our health. On one especially stressful day, I took a few moments to draft the poem, Every Breath Deeper Than the Last. I drafted it in a hospital waiting room while taking care of my mom. Months later, when I began to revise it, I realized how desperately I was trying to connect with my breath. I wanted the thumping, hard beating in my chest to quiet down and be replaced by my normal, rather slow rhythm. But my thoughts were racing. When will the doctor tell us about this last stroke? Are they discharging her soon because she hates it here? And can I take care of her myself at home? With all that mental angst and chatter, it was no wonder that my heart was racing. I'd literally have to turn off my mind completely to find some peace in that moment. It didn't happen then. But I did have the sense to take up my journal and write. Write it out so that I could focus at least some small amount of attention on my creativity. On words that felt good. And on the mechanics of putting pen strokes on paper. The heart pounding did stop for a while while I wrote and I filed that experience in my mind for a later day. I thought, let's remember that creative actions can help quiet the mind and engage it in joyful activities during times of stress. Let's remember that it's important to gain some control over the breath, to quiet the mind a bit. These ideas would become the genesis of this podcast. Here's every breath deeper than the last. Every breath deeper than the last. Everything I touch, there goes a broken glass. Everywhere I look, a sea of people moving fast. Every breath I take, harder than the last. Alternate universe, a blind spot spans east to west, swallowed by quicksand at devil's bequest. It's time to get out of my head. I have arms, legs, a heart, a soul, all well fed. My breath is strong, my words well said. Drenched thick golden honey spread and testing times I fight against. Sweat on the brow, muscles peaked and tensed to get into my body and out of my head. I do one thing and only one. I take one breath. A new moment's begun. Slow the pace. Forget first place. Scratch the race. Punt the ball. Take my time to hearken grace. I can do that. I can. Stop running here to there. Everywhere that feels like nowhere. Tread lightly, breathe slow, the crisp night air, for every breath deeper than the last. In order to tempt down these stress responses, we have to be mindful of our breath, and we can use a variety of tools to help us do that. 
I don't see these as a cure-all, but they can bring some stillness to your breathing. They can give you some activities to do to quiet down the fight-or-flight response to put a little space between this uncomfortable, stressful place that you're in and where you want to be. The first tool is meditative or mindful breathing. You knew I was going to start with meditative breathing, didn't you? The reason I'm starting here is because it works. And before you moan and roll your eyes, which I sometimes do when given self-help advice that sounds easy but really isn't, let me disclose that I don't engage in mindful breathing or breath work, as it's sometimes called, every day. Not even close. And I don't want to add another thing to your to-do list unless it gives you a few moments of peace to yourself. I think mindful breathing can do that. I'm what you call a fumbling beginner when it comes to putting meditation of any kind into daily practice. I'm proud of my beginner status because at least I'm trying and I'm not beating myself up when I don't meditate. Some weeks I meditate a few times and other weeks I don't. I made a promise to myself when I started meditating that I wouldn't use it to beat myself up. I wouldn't become regimented with my meditation because that defeats the purpose of trying to find a calm mind and body. And I don't want that for you either. You probably have too much on your plate as it is. So perhaps you can start by using mindful breathing when your fight or flight kicks in. I would try it a few times before then. So you know what you were aiming for and you'll have an easier time moving the mind and body back to a peaceful state because you can recognize and enjoy how that feels. I also use my daily walks to get in some meditative moments. I slow down and calm my breath to anchor my thoughts so they don't try to run away from me. The premise behind mindful breathing is that you can't be anxious and relaxed at the same time, and I found that to be true. With mindful breathing, you consciously direct your attention to your breath for the purpose of changing your body and mind. To get started with mindful breathing, head to the show notes and check out the link to an article by Mindful Communications. It's a public benefit corporation, and their website at mindful.org has a big collection of articles and resources to help us cultivate mindfulness with the goal of improving our life and being more compassionate as we move through society and impact others. They offer a six-minute breathing meditation that includes a GIF a colorful image that moves in and out and can be used to sink your breath. That may work for some of you. Uh, but if you find your breathing getting out of whack with this sort of external cue, just don't use it. I tend to like to follow my own breathing pattern because I've developed a sort of rhythm that feels good. If you don't have any experience with diaphragmatic breathing, using the GIF pacer might be helpful. Breathing from the diaphragm increases the amount of oxygen to your brain and activates a complementary system, the parasympathetic nervous system. This system returns your body to a calming, restful place, kind of counterbalancing the fight-or-flight response. Find the link to the six-minute breathing meditation in the show notes. I've also linked to a resource on mindful breathing that includes exercises, scripts, and video, including ones for kids. Uh, it offers a ton of resources as you explore this tool. After mindful breathing, the next tool is exercise. I think of exercise as a mental health aid, as much as I think of it as something that's good for my body. According to some research, exercise can decrease our sensitivity to the way our body reacts to anxiety. Researchers found that exercise, especially high-intensity exercise, helps treat anxiety. See the article in the show notes for more. Many recommend calming exercises like yoga or tai chi, and I think those can be helpful, but don't discount higher intensity exercises, cardio like spinning or rowing. Um, perhaps it's a slower calming cardio like swimming that works for you. I also love weight training for pushing out anxious thoughts. I focus on lifting the heavy weight and my mind has to concentrate on exerting that effort. I expend some of my negative energy when I lift the weights and afterward I feel stronger and that helps me believe that I can overcome my fears and anxiety. Check out the show notes for an article on the mental health benefits of exercise. There's a ton of resources on, in this episode uh, in the show notes. Experiment with different exercise intensities until you find one that feels good, both in the moment and hours later. 
The next tool is one of my favorites. It's music. They say music calms the savage beast, and I believe it. It's funny how old memories come to mind when I remember these sayings I heard as a child. I'm dating myself here, but when I was a child, I used to watch Bugs Bunny. You know that cartoon. Everyone did. And there was this episode where Bugs decided to make money by renting a hurdy-gurdy and a monkey and going into the music business. What's a hurdy-gurdy, you ask? This phrase was new to me, too, but it's a street organ that you push like a cart. And so they're pushing this cart down the, down the street, and the monkey's on top, and he's dancing, and the music comes out of the cart. I had to find the old video. Again, see the show notes for a link. It's a funny little video. Just give yourself a chuckle and watch it. Anyway, Bugs sets out to make money. He cranks out the music while the little monkey climbs up New York City skyscrapers, collecting money from tenants' windows. Now, why they would give a monkey money is beyond me, but it's a cartoon. Also, the music sounds like those loud ice cream truck tunes, but we'll just go with it because it's silly, and we need some of that in our lives. So when the little monkey tries to swindle bugs out of the money, he fires him. And the monkey goes back to the zoo and tells this big gorilla what happened. The gorilla busts into bugs' apartment and he's enraged and he's just he's gonna just beat the crap out of him but bugs pulls out his handy violin and begins playing music quote to soothe the savage beast it works and the gorilla starts dancing it's really very cute and in the last scene we see the gorilla happily jumping from window to window collecting wads of money that trickle down into the sidewalks it's a great cartoon so check out the show notes and see how this idea of soothing the savage beast with uh, music kind of plays out in Bugs' world. Often, when I think about music calming me down, I think of that gorilla. I'm the gorilla, and music does work. It's magic. I don't care what type you listen to. So get a good playlist. Check out mine on YouTube if you want to listen to some of my favorites. Um, they say that classical music or other soothing music calms us by lowering our heart rate and our blood pressure and stress and this stress hormone response. But I've also found that my drum and bass beats and fast paced music can energize me in a way that diverts the fight or flight activation and translates it into a calmer state afterward. I like to dance. So I think the combination of fast pop, you know, hip hop or electronica music with the action of dancing works. Um, like exercise does, to release my stress, and then I feel calm afterward. Experiment with it, perhaps listening to music while drawing or crafting. That could help to also release your stress. The last tool is art making and other creative pursuits. We can reduce the inner chatter and re-engage our calm by using our hands and minds in creative activities that have meaning for us. Every time I journal when anxious, I write it out until I eventually come to a point where the severity and immediacy of the anxious moment subsides for just a bit. Of course, if you get really engrossed in a creative activity and enter a flow state, your consciousness changes and you lose track of time because you are fully engaged in the creative act. It's hard for the fight or flight response to compete with your total immersion in some joyful and purposeful act. Instead of talking about this, I want to direct you to a Mandela art-making activity. Follow the link in the show notes to an article called, Can You Meditate Through Art? And learn how to use mindful breathing to make a beautiful mandala. I'll be making mine soon and may share it with you. Will you share yours? Please do. Find me on Instagram and tag me with a photo of your mandala. given you a lot of tools to tap into today. Please don't get overwhelmed. You aren't meant to do all of them every day. Pick one when you're off kilter and unhinged by the fight or flight response. Let's manage our stress by embracing things that feel good. Today's journal prompts will help you reflect on your breath so that you can begin to become mindful of how your breathing affects your mind and spirit. During mindful breathing, ask yourself these questions. 1. 
What did you notice about the rhythm of your breath? Two, when your mind wandered from the breath, what did you tell yourself to return your focus to breathing? Was it helpful? And three, which pathway to calmness, mindful breathing, exercise, art making and creativity, or music feels right to you? How will you start? Until next time, don't forget to stay on the bright side of the beat. To check out my free podcast, head to my website, lettheverseflow.com, or find me on all major podcast apps. I'll be sharing stories, my original poetry, and music playlists that inspire this show. We're in this together. So reach out to me on Instagram.com, let the verse flow, and let me know what you think and what topics you'd like me to cover. You'll also find extras, like how I create this show and what inspires my music selections and poetry. I hope you'll tune in to Let the Verse Flow to hear my reflections from the bright side of the beat.